Uh, thank you, Linda and Brian, for asking me to uh, come and share my, some thoughts. And uh, I think it's so nice to be able to interact with patients and sort of think about it a lot. That you know, everything I know, everything I do, really is from patients and for patients. That is, so you know, I'm a doctor, so all my livelihood is through patients. I'm a scientist, and all my questions really come from studying patients. And so therefore, thank you for uh, providing me with everything that I do over the course of these uh, last 20 or 30 years now. So what is, what is, wrong, with, uh, uh, what is wrong with this whole problem? So we, we are facing an epidemic of liver disease. And as you can see, the diseases of the liver in the UK is increasing year by year, such that we are reaching nearly 40,000 uh, new cases of, liver, uh, cases of liver disease, and really one of the biggest killers in the UK is alcoholic liver disease. And I think this, this will resonate with you, that this inexorable increase in deaths from liver disease is occurring due to uh, predominantly from alcohol. And if you can look at this, that year on year, more and more patients that we diagnose with liver disease are dying. We lose nearly, like Doug says, nearly uh, 16 to 20,000 patients a year. And this is really the only disease which is on the up. Deaths from heart disease is coming down, deaths from cancer is coming down, and it's only deaths from cirrhosis is going up. And I think that, you know, it, it's a sobering thought that, you know, if you've got a transplant, you're amongst the 600 people out of this 17,000. Uh, that, uh, so it's a very, very, very small uh, number. So why do we think about liver dialysis? And we think about liver dialysis because of this fact that, you know, the liver is an amazing organ. And, you know, if you think about, um, you know, what liver has is the ability to regenerate. And, you know, this is, uh, real, this is thought of in our existence as the essence of life itself. And the story goes that, you know, if you know the story of Prometheus, uh, who stole the sacred fire from the gods and gave it to mankind. And his punishment was that he was chained to the, chained to the caucus and a vulture came and ate the liver every night and, uh, during the day and the liver grew back at night to where it was. So therefore, liver does have this incredible capacity to repair itself. And so the fundamental thinking that we have now is that if we can support the liver long enough, take away injurious factors, then we can start, it, start to get it to recover. So, you know, so we, we are attached to our heart. We talk about the heart as being the central of existence. But that is Shakespeare in 1600. But before that, if you look at any ancient literature, and I'm an Indian, so if you look at an Indian context, uh, liver is literally translated as heart. And so, the ancient Indians, the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks realized that the heart, the liver was really the center of our existence. And you know, if it goes wrong, and I'll show you in a second, you even get heart failure. So we're getting the point, liver is extremely, extremely important. But fundamentally, if we can take injury away, we can get the liver to recover. And therefore, that's, that's why we want to talk about awareness. That is, we, if we diagnose a patient with liver disease, at any stage, we should be able to do something for a large majority of them, but we'll fail. And transplantation is really the failure of medical therapy or medical advances. So what does it do? Now I think about it in very simple terms. So when I talk about it as something that is regulated, so it, is, it protects us. So you can imagine that you know the liver is like the covering on our skin. So our our gut is completely open, you know, so the liver is the first port of defense that we've got. It synthesizes, so I think about it as an engine. It makes everything that we do, you know what I mean? It makes the proteins, it uh, nourishes the brain, it provides energy for your muscle to work, and so on. So if you're not uh, very well, then you get tired. It's a sanitation plant, so you can imagine that you know, if, if your loo clogs up, your whole house will stink and you will have a very toxic environment. So I think about it as a sanitation plant. It is a regulator, you know what I mean? So it is the master, bandmaster. So 
you go to an orchestra and the main uh, uh, player is not working, you, you will get a chaos. It's like the parliament. The parliament is dysfunctional. Your country is in chaos. It was happening in Italy as we speak. <laughs> so regulation. So it's a central regulator. So it, it regulates your sexual function, your sleep, and so on, which is deranged where the liver doesn't work very well. And it just basically controls a whole lot. It controls your brain, your heart, the kidney, the lung, and so on, and so on, and so on, as I'll illustrate to you. So it's a center of our existence. And, you know, when something is a center of our existence, nature gives us the ability to regenerate. That is the key issue, that it can regenerate. So it's trying to protect us. And, you know, it's amazing that Professor Davidson would cut out somebody's 80% of somebody's liver, and this liver will grow back to where it was within seven days, eight days, 90% of the liver, if it took away 70% of the liver. So it's an incredible pace of growth. It's not even sort of, uh, you know, a uh, small rate of growth. So this I've put up, it's a sort of a complicated slide, but just to sort of illustrate to you what happens when the liver fails. When the liver fails, and some of you who are patients would have, would have uh, experienced this, that you have increased propensity to infection. You have episodes when the, you're confused and you're tired. Tiredness is a terrible symptom. We know it's not happening in the muscle. It's probably happening in the brain. Itching is probably happening in the brain as much as in the periphery. The liver is not working, so you become jaundiced. You, become, you cannot eat. You become anorexic. The kidneys fail, and some of you may have had kidney dysfunction as a part of your liver dysfunction. And it just goes to show that the liver is controlling all these other organs. And then the blood pressure can fall and, and so on. So when the liver doesn't work, none of the organ systems work. And this is because of a buildup of a lot of toxins. And that is why we're thinking about liver dialysis. So there are toxins that I've written down there. There probably I could make a list which is about 200 odd toxins that accumulate in our bodies if the liver doesn't work very well. And that is why these organs are not working very well. So, you know, so, so it is this power of regeneration that we want to be able to use. So if you look at the figure at the bottom, the whole concept of liver dialysis is this. That is, if we could find the right machine, just like kidney dialysis, we could, in a patient that is deteriorating, gets dysfunction of an organ, if we could take away these nasty toxins, which is preventing liver regeneration from happening, or hitting the organs that you work with, then we can create an environment for recovery. So if you can see there, is there a pointer? So just to say that this is where you're starting to deteriorate. You know, you can have cirrhosis for years and years, 20 years, 30 years, start to deteriorate. The idea is if we can treat patients with liver dialysis at that particular time, then we can start to recover them to where they are. And, that, you know, so that has been a quest that, you know, all of us, Dr. Selvin is, uh, is, is working on one of, one, of, one of these. Professor Hodgson's worked on one of these for about 10 years. We've been working on this for about 10 or 15 years. So what does it take to build a liver dialysis machine? You know, so the idea is the toxins that accumulate in liver failure are very different to kidney failure. Because kidney failure is easy, I think, or easier because you're dealing with substances that are soluble in water. Whereas when I show you the toxins that accumulate in liver failure are toxins that are not soluble in water. It is soluble in protein. That is, it's soluble in lipid. And it permeates all the organ systems because there's a lot of lipid in different organ systems. So what does it take? So what is out there at the moment is there are lots of different devices that people have worked on, but not very successful. And I'll show you how these things work in one or two slides. So what we can do is, and this is a, a, a project that Dr. Selden is working on, that is, what you can do is to, outside the body, to grow a lot of liver cells and put it into a, a cartridge and pass your blood through this cartridge 
to see if he can detoxify it. Our approach is a little bit simpler, where what we are trying to do is to use some of body's own mechanisms, such as albumin, which is a very, it's like a sponge, to see if he can detoxify those patients. Let's show you a couple of illustrations, illustrations how this works. So this is a, this is a commercial device, which, uh, which is in development, uh, but it's not been fantastically helpful. What they do is to take these cells, so these are cancer cell lines, which you put into this uh, device, which has function, functions like liver cells. What you can do is to pass the patient's blood into this at 400 grams of cells and pass this back into the patient so that the, the toxin from the blood is detoxified outside the body using liver cells, which is a fantastic idea because you've got a, almost like a liver outside the body. And this has been sort of, you know, variably successful. These are extremely expensive devices and difficult, but you can imagine life is probably much more expensive than that. So this is a study that they did in China, which provides some proof of concept that if you treat patients, you can start to see some benefit in survival. These are patients that are not treated. These are patients that are treated. Now, this is a first, first generation device. And Professor Hodgson and Dr. Selden are working on a new device, which we think is likely to lead to better outcomes than this. So watch that space. What else can we do? So this is a device that I have worked with for a long time. And basically what you do is you take patient's plasma. It's a, it's a, this is a simpler, a much simpler device, where what we do is that we dialyze the blood against albumin. A lot of you may have had albumin infusions while you were sick as patients. And basically, albumin is a very, it's like a sponge. It catches these nasty toxins and can take it away from the body. So this is called MARS. It's a commercial device. And really, one of the most dramatic effects of this, use of this device is within patients who itch. And itching is a very important symptom of liver disease and very horrible symptom. Now, some of these patients here have got such bad uh, itching that they cannot sleep. They have not slept for ages. That is, they are, their whole body is covered with scratches. And with this device, what we can show is that they get instantaneous relief. But the problem is that liver disease is not uh, uh, forgiving, and this itch tends to return. So a lot of us are now starting to figure, try and figure out as to what is it that causes the itch. And I think we have some very important clues as to what is causing the itch so hopefully in the next three to five years, we will have a drug or another device which is specific so that this improvement can be sustained. So watch that space. What does this do? This is looking at patients that are, that are in coma. That is, we know that in liver failure, the brain can be very dysfunctional. And when you study patients and you treat them with this device, they wake up faster, okay? So, so this is proof of concept that we can take toxins away that can make patients better. But I think that we are still a little bit far away to say that we can enhance recovery. So that is treating them, we can make some things better, but not fully uh, get them, you know, increase the survival. So that is the unmet need that several of us in the area are working on. So this is a new device that we are developing at UCL. Some of the Arsenal supporters should be happy. Who are the Arsenal supporters? Yeah. So this is my postdoc, who is uh, uh, now a senior lecturer, who is uh, building this device. It's called the UCL liver dialysis machine, which is really based upon our better understanding of liver failure. We think that the main issues are with preventing infection. And we've, we've developed two new cartridges that take away specific toxins, which we think will allow for recovery of the patient. So we are in early stages, probably going into human trial in about six months. So these are studies from animal models. And what we can show here in the blue is that patient, these animals survive about 30% longer time. So this is very exciting for people who work in this sort of area because it is extremely difficult to even gain one or two hours of survival in these very sick animals. So hopefully, we can translate this into human clinical trials, which we're hoping to start in six to nine months' time. So watch that space. So therefore, uh, just to conclude, therefore, 
that you know, deaths from liver disease is increasing. I think it's a, it's a huge issue. And you know, environments like this is very important to take the message to your friends, to your family, to say, watch it, guys. And organs for transplantation is in very short supply. I think you know, we need to be able to harness this regenerative potential of the liver a little bit better. We, are, we have not done that yet. We are working on it. Several groups around the world are working on this. And I think this will be the key to increasing or turning back liver disease. I think liver dialysis is going to be here in one shape, form, or the other. Within the next three to five years, we'll have a dialysis machine which is very much like a kidney dialysis machine so that patients who are waiting for transplantation will not die while they wait for an organ to become available. So we have a device which, which obviously will enter into clinical trials. There's another device here at the Raw Free, which is based on the biological component. So we think that there may be some sicker patients who need that as opposed to the earlier dialysis system. So we have complete solutions now at the Raw Free where we can go from supporting patients, and you'll hear from uh, Professor DeShaco that we can probably solve hepatitis C in the next three to five years. The earlier liver failure patient will probably solve with the dialysis machine I've shown you. And the sicker patients we should be able to solve with the biological device that Professor Hudson and Dr. Seldon are working on. And really, you know, one of the big things that make uh, research happen is money. And, you know, we have, we've been very lucky to be supported by the Department of Health, which is helping us build this device. Medical Research Council, and of course, we've had uh, quite a lot of money given to us from donations from uh, environments such as this. So, thank you very much.